stand. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Blessed be the poor and the hungry. Embraced at God's table, filled with good things. Blessed be those who weep and those who are rejected. Erupting with God's laughter, leaping for joy. Let us pray. Lord of heaven's reach, of earth reborn, you call us from starless graves to sing under dazzling skies. We praise your name for those who have walked this way unheralded and unnumbered, but known to you, their beginning, their end, their joy in life. Give us the same grace to be unbound and take the step of faith through Jesus Christ, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Daniel. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, 
forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm responsively, beginning with the Walker Hall side and responding with the classroom side. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with tremble and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice and triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand. To rake vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. Grind their kings in chains, their nobles with links of iron. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. A reading from Ephesians. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shepherd I have all I need Sheep in my dying pastures beside the still waters
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Water divides, water cuts, water carves giant canyons in the earth, water marks the borders of states and nations, on this side Israel, on this side Jordan, water separates one people from another. We often imagine our beloved dead across the water. We say they have reached that other shore. A friend of mine once said that when his family told his grandmother that she had to move into a nursing home, she said, no, I'm just going to take my cross and cross on over. Losing her independence felt like a death to her, and so she thought of rivers and canyons, the living all here, the dead over yonder, across the river. She wanted to go home, and she knew that home was now across the water. When we baptize, we watch as water does its thing, cutting and dividing, carving and separating. In baptism, we are cut off from our former selves. We now belong to Christ. We have a name, a community, a home on this side of the water. Baptism separates us from our lesser selves, too. In baptism, we are washed into a new way of living, one that is focused relentlessly on other people, their needs, their hopes, their concerns. The baptismal water carries us away from self-centered anxiety. We sometimes fret and worry, and this is only natural. The water does not make us inhuman. But we worry about more than our own needs, our own people. The baptized body of Christ feels Christ's own compassion for our neighbors who are in deepest need. Baptism also separates us from death. We are given a spirit of wisdom and revelation, as we just heard in the letter to the Ephesians. The eyes of our hearts are enlightened. We can see beyond our mortal death to life in Christ who fills all things. Yes, we will all die, but we are separated forever from hopelessness and despair. Our lives have power and purpose. We live to the praise of God's glory, but there's more. Baptism separates us from lonely isolation and the small dreariness of a community where everybody is the same. We are not a little village at the edge of nowhere, empty of diversity, hostile to outsiders. The community of the baptized flourishes around the globe, pulsing with energy, astonishingly diverse, often contentious, 
sometimes riven with conflict. There's water being divisive again, riven with conflict. Conflict, like a river, can divide us, at least at first. And so once again, later this morning, we will go down to the river to pray, carrying our siblings, Adelaide and Miles, with us. They will be doused in the divisive waters of holy baptism, separated from their former selves, riven from their lesser selves, carried far across the water, away from hopelessness and despair, away from the powers of sin and death, into the community of Christ, the crucified and risen one, the firstborn of the blessed dead, the source of our hope, the one who fills our anxious hearts with courage, the one who gives us the power to live to the praise of God's glory. How grand. They will need our help. And it is here that I fear that I, <laughs> that I am breaking with grief because I cannot personally be here to join you in raising Adelaide and Miles in this community. Dang it. <laughs> In our most recent leadership meetings at Grace Church, the wardens asked everyone to take a turn saying kind things to me, which was lovely. It was uncomfortable, but it was lovely. And I broke with grief when it was Carol's turn <laughs> because she mentioned her sons. And then I thought of Heather and Joe's daughters and Nell's and Darius's daughters and Dan and Melissa's daughters, and Erica and Raul's children, and the Fitzpatrick family, and Adelaide and Miles, and many other young saints, and how my impractical heart wishes I could be here with you to grow them up, to lift them up, to launch them, and finally watch as they lead us. I broke with grief because, once again, water will do its thing. It separates us, this time literally, all this time I have been at Grace Church, I have lived across the chasm of the Salish Sea. <laughs> I have taken a ferry ride across that water nearly 700 times. And often I would stand at the shore and look across that water from both directions. Sometimes I'd be on the beach at Fay Bainbridge, looking back at Seattle and wondering what was happening at my home. Other times I'd be on 11th and Gaylor near my house where there's a grand overlook of Smith Cove and Elliott Bay, and I'd watch the Bainbridge Ferry emerging south from Eagle Harbor and wonder about all of you. I will miss you. Maybe that's the one thing that water can't cut us off from. The baptismal water does not separate us from grief, at least not until the last day, that great getting up morning. Until then, baptism seems to intensify grief. It does this because in holy baptism, we draw closer to one another. We rely on each other. We delight in each other. We fall in love. I love you. It was bound to happen. You are so easy to love. <laughs> and I have a frantic, thirsty kind of love for people. I'm that kind of dog. And I now have that kind of dog. I'm so happy. <laughs> and this kind of love all too easily breaks our hearts. But Jesus says, we who weep are blessed. We are happy. Blessed are you who weep now, he says, for you will laugh. Now we know he isn't just talking about the sadness of endings and departures. There is always a broader ethic in what Jesus is saying. He's intense. And so we know he is talking chiefly about those who are grieved by injustice and oppression. Again, in baptism, we are separated forever from a focus on ourselves alone. But there is a delightful simplicity in his words that somehow gathers us all up into the heartbroken community of laughing ones. The heartbroken community of laughing ones. Shattered by grief, yet stitched back together by Christ, our hearts will sing with laughter. Later on this morning, after the baptisms, I will take the oil of chrism and anoint the foreheads of Adelaide and Miles with the sign of the cross. 
In that moment, I will say you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. That is a lot to say. When we talked about it the other day, I told Adelaide and Miles that in baptism, they are joined to the priesthood of all believers. And so they need to be anointed, just like priests, prophets, and kings have been anointed in ages past. You will be members of a royal priesthood, I told them. You will be prophets in God's church. Then I said, you will be sovereigns. Queen Adelaide and King Miles. (laughs) I do not believe this made very much sense. Adelaide was polite as she listened, and I do think she understood more than she let on. Miles just gave me his million-dollar smile. That old bald guy is talking, and we need to sit here while he talks. (laughs) That much you all have understood. (laughs) So you all here at Grace Church, it is your joyful task to teach Adelaide and Miles how to be in this heartbroken community of laughing ones. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Teach them the Lord's Prayer and the Ten Commandments. Teach them the Beatitudes the delightful good news of Jesus that the poor and those who weep and all the others will be, they are blessed. They are happy. Go ahead and teach them the woe to use as well while you're at it. Because Adelaide and Miles have to learn that there are terrible problems in this world and that people are capable of doing terribly bad things. Woe to you, Jesus says. This heartbroken community of laughing ones isn't just a partying crowd. Baptism separates us from merely celebrating and eating cake without doing the hard work of beloved community. Christ is risen, but he first was crucified. And so it is that Adelaide and Miles will sometimes be broken in grief. Yet they will stand tall today and be sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. They will be sovereigns in the royal family of God. And so as part of our laughter through tears, laughter through tears, it's a specialty in this community of the baptized. I invite you to do as I do when you find yourself in the presence of these new royals. Bow your heads, reverencing the presence of Christ in them might be overkill to greet them with your majesty. (laughs) Embrace them. Hold on to them. Take good care of them. I will be looking across the water at you, standing on that overlook at 11th and Gaylor. I will be praying glad prayers of gratitude for all of you, and my broken heart will be filled with laughter. Amen. What did he do? Oh. Go let him know. All right. Please stand. I don't know who's screaming, but (laughs) they're very excited. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Oh, come on up. Where's dad? There he is. And we have a godparent remotely. Howdy. I don't know where his filming is. All right. All right, you guys have a line on the bottom of page seven.
nice and loud. It's all right. Will you be responsible for seeing that these children you present are nurtured in the Christian life of faith, hope, and love? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Adelaide and Miles to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Adelaide and Miles in their new life in Christ? Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? With God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Adelaide and Miles who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Just hang out. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the font. Everyone is invited to join us as you are able.
<clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death, by it we share in his resurrection, through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You ready? I'm going to have you come nice and far forward. All right. Adelaide, Marianne, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We're almost done. Miles Quinn, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good job. This mm. going really wants to blow out. <laughs> May the light of Christ burn in your heart. Enlighten your mind. And guide you in your ministry. Let God's people sing. back inside.
to have you come up here and face the people. Back you up just a little bit. Let us pray. O God of life, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying together, we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome. <laughs> favorite people. Peace. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Peace. Peace. Thank you, Mother Daphne. Peace. Thank you. Dave. Peace. I miss you too. Peace, thank you. No bleeding deacons. Be seated. Peace. Don't be mad. <laughs> I love you. The whole time? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
is 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 great. Thank you. We have much to celebrate here at Grace Church, and if this is your first time with us, it isn't always like this, but it is often much like this. <laughs> and uh, we also invite you, um, it seems like the weather is cooperating, so if you are brand new and you would like to walk with one of our members, um, we have a, a thing we do called Walk and Talk, where you can, oops, I'm loud, where you can um, walk the trails with one of us and learn a little bit more about Grace Church. Just look for Liz in the entryway after the service, and she'd be happy to walk with you. Also, at communion, we're using a Eucharistic prayer that is long. I'm sorry about that. And it's ancient. I'm not sorry about that. Um, but it allows us to include in our table prayers uh, remembrances of those who have died. And so um, about halfway through, two-thirds of the way through the Eucharistic prayer, on page 17, you'll find a whole bunch of remembers. We, we remember all the saints and all of the different, our forebears in the faith. We remember those who are sick in need of healing and those who are in need of support. And then we say a prayer of remembrance for those who have died. And at that point, I strongly and warmly encourage you to just say out loud, remember, and just say the name of the person that you miss, who you love and see no longer. Our hope is that this is a tapestry of names, so we aren't doing it one after the other, but all together in a jumble, in a delightful chorus of remembrance for those who have died. So when we get to that part, please don't be shy. Everyone is welcome at the table. Please come forward and help us form the circle. When you get here, you can ask for gluten-free bread or alcohol-free wine, if that's what you'd like. You can also pass on the wine if you would rather just have bread. And if you would just like a blessing and don't want to receive communion, that's okay too. Just hug yourself, and I will ask God's blessing upon you. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. since gone now way back when we lived in Coney Island ain't no good thing ever dies I'm gonna take it with me
gonna take it with me when I go. All broken down by the side of the road. I was never Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. i 
We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. You loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us he sent the holy spirit his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end at supper with them he took bread and when he had given thanks to you he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all of us here at Grace and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those closest to our hearts. Remember those in need of healing, including Josie, Peg, Rebecca, Geraldine, Marja, Tom, Molly N, Molly M, Susan. Remember those in need of support, including Kathy, Andrew, Susan, and Mario, Mark, Rose, Sarah, Susan, Kathleen, Dashu. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. Remember Mark. Remember Nancy. Remember Giovanna. Remember Richard. Remember Richard. Remember Helen. Remember Tilly. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. 
forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Before we begin the birthdays and anniversaries, I want us to say prayers of blessing and sending for our friend Susan, our sister Susan. She's here. Please come forward. Susan, you're going to be leaving us, and we would like to lay hands on you and pray blessings of departure for you. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this, your servant. We ask your blessings upon her to fill her with grace and power, strengthen her heart, fill her lungs with your breath, guide her mind, bring her body to safety and rest and the comfort of family. Teach her and reassure her that as long as we are apart, the ground between us is holy ground. Amen. Amen. Farewell. If you have a birthday or anniversary to celebrate with us, please come forward. We have a birthday girl who just got baptized as well. And I'll have you say your name and what we're celebrating. And I see a tambourine is in my future. <laughs> my name's Mike, and tomorrow I will be 71. Just starting. Uh, I'm Laura, and on Wednesday I will be 35. I am Norm, and Linda and I will be married 43 years next week. I'm Liz, and I had a birthday yesterday, and my brother had a birthday last week. Happy birthday. Uh, 32 years ago, on November 2nd, Lauren Tyner, our daughter, was born. Oh, yay. And our new little grandson is three years old as of November 3rd. Excellent. I'm Brisa, and my cousin is turning five, well, turned five on, no on November 4th. Great. This is Adelaide, and she is turning how old? Eight. When? Today. <laughs> uh. um, from Zoom, Flory's son Ted's 51st birthday was November 1st. And Linda Evans has two granddaughters. Skylar will be 13, and Naomi will be two on November 19th. Great. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the servant who knitted this prayer shawl. We ask your blessing upon the shawl and upon all who use it to sing your praises. We also ask your blessing and give thanks to you for these, your servants, as they celebrate another year and another year together. Fill them with grace and power. Break their hearts open. Send them from here with your joy, your truth, and your deep, glad, good news. Amen. Amen. I have to play this that tambourine. tambourine. It's Jesus. part of the hazing. Here we go. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> now I'm supposed to play it. Here it comes. Holy moly. Need the microphone for the wardens, please. 
Are you coming up? Are you doing that? That's good. Oh. Hello? Miles and Adelaide, you sure know how to draw a crowd. I think someone else might have a little bit to do with that, though. I'm going to come up. When we first learned that Stephen Crippen was coming to Grace as curate, we were excited. Yeah, have, a seat. have a seat. We were excited to have another clergy to support our priest. And we hoped that he might stay on as an associate after the curacy ended. But a different plan was in the works. I like to think that God was having a little laugh looking down on us at that moment. Just you wait, Grace. Mm -hmm. If our plan had borne out, we would have missed on experiencing so many of Stephen's gifts, first as curate and then as our interim rector. Stephen has taught us, Stephen has been all in on grace. He baptized our children, he buried our loved ones, he taught and challenged us with excellent homilies, he pastored us, he loved us. He brought his whole authentic self to every liturgy, meeting, encounter, his love for the rich traditions of the church pushed us to be flexible with liturgical innovations that have become old habits for us now, and has pushed us to grow stronger as a faith community with a unique identity and vocation. Having Stephen as our priest brought us the gifts of his leadership at a time when that was exactly what our church needed. Turns out, God has a good plan for Grace Church. During Lent, Stephen illuminated for us the text from Luke, when Jesus is compared to a mother hen. He said, God the mother hen, like all good mothers, keeps us warm, not to relieve us of our worries and ward off all dangers, but to raise us into adults ourselves. Jesus Christ stretches her wings around humanity, not to keep us cozy, but to build us up, to grow us up, to make us the wings of Christ for others. These words remind me also of Stephen's work with us. He has loved and cared for us fiercely to build us up and grow us, not to relieve us all our worries, but to shape us into the wings of Christ. We know that there's more to God's plan. And so in faith, we say thank you and see you later to Stephen today. Stephen, we're so grateful for you. You will be so, so missed. And we are excited for you to move on to your new calling, knowing that God will continue to work through you, spreading the love of Jesus to the world, just as you have done here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh oh. I can't put this on the altar because the priest says that's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Oh, yay. Oh, lovely. Oh, look, it's embroidered. My favorite color is on this shawl. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask all the children to come forward. All the children. And Stephen coming to the middle. <laughs> all the children. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> all the children. I want to pick Miles up. And then we're going to put, after all the children get in, and put their hands on Stephen. I'm gonna you get down. Kneel down? Okay. Yep, I'm getting down. Thank you. And then all the adults, everybody, come in. <laughs> True. Sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> I work at that. In the octave of All Saints, this has been requested 
by our wardens, St. Luke and St. Heather. <laughs> Before the blessing, however, I do want to mention that as you looked at the pictures of our dearly departed, there was one section at one end for the, dear, for the nearly departed, which looks rather like Stephen. I, I feel healthy. <laughs> Stephen, may your creative mind, revealed in your speaking and writing, continue to flourish. May your powerful preaching become even stronger and more insightful. May your innovative liturgical planning and implementation thrive. May your example of godly marriage with Andrew continue to be a model for others. May your peaceful pastoral presence continue to support those who suffer. May your leadership and administrative skills continue to be effective without overwhelming. May your empowerment of lay ministry continue to provide opportunities for all people. May you continue to be the loving and lovable person that you have been with us. And now, may the blessing of God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our model of divine humanity, and the Holy Spirit, our inspiration each day, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's a song, but wait, I gotta bless the folks. All right, put it. All right, please remain standing. We're almost done. It's almost time for cake. Forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're going to let the kids leave this one. Right. Yeah, do it. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>